Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I had to pick up my phone because I have something I need to read on it about tonight's Tyson House thing, so I don't miss anything. Welcome on this, uh, what is it, 23rd Sunday after Pentecost as we continue to march through the Pentecost season. Uh, glad to have you on this beautiful fall day. Uh, Candace is still at home healing, so we will do the service without music. And uh, she, is, she is right now thinking she can be back. Uh, probably next week, but we will all kind of continue to stay in touch with her on that. Uh, at some point, if it looks like she's going to need to be out for an extended period of time, then we'll talk about the substitute, uh, but I just don't want her to feel rushed to, to come back, and I think I think we can do just fine here with a, with a slightly different type of service. So. Um, I also want to take this time to congratulate the Mayo family on uh, Kara, our own Kara, who we've known for so many years here, uh, was uh, named the Healthcare Worker of the Year by the Southeast Region of Social Workers. So Brenda and, where's John go? There he, there he is. Brenda and John, we congratulate you as the parents for raising her to be such a good healthcare worker. Uh, so tonight uh, is our night to provide dinner for the Tyson House group. And I want to read what Nancy sent out again just so we're all on the same page. Let me find that again. Um, so they're celebrating Halloween this Sunday uh, with um, a, their usual meal and service, which will be done by the bishop this time. And people are invited to wear costumes if they would like to wear costumes. You don't have to wear a costume. I imagine there'll be some people there in costume and some not. Uh, we need to be there by 5.30. Um, usually they don't start eating till 6. I don't know, Nancy, was 5.30 our time to be there or? I, I gathered and it's kind of confusing. I went to their website. I gathered that they're being invited to come at 5.30 for the more Halloween part. Got okay. But if you can't come at five thirty, they usually eat at six oh four, as they say. Okay. And uh, then the Eucharist follows immediately after. So, was there any need if people were bringing food for them to be there before five thirty? Well, Tina said, and she was my source, said to come. And I think you could probably take the food in at five thirty. At five maybe. Um, Let's agree at 5.30. They can't eat the food if we haven't gotten there with it, right? <laughs> so <laughs> so we'll, we'll be there at 5.30. We're, the, the intent is to have uh, dinner outside around Tyson House. Remember that parking isn't always easy there. You may have to drive up with the food and then go find some other place to park on one of the, one of the streets. Uh, Jim and I will be bringing um, a vegan black beans with carrots and rice, which should cover everybody since a lot of them are vegetarian or vegan, but it's also something that's hearty enough for, for meat lovers. And I'm going to do it separately, so if, they, if people don't eat rice, they can make their choice about that. Tina and Rick are going to be bringing a broccoli and cheese casserole. They said at Tyson House they have plenty of drinks, so don't anybody bring drinks. And I think they said they had plenty of mayonnaise, but I'm not positive <laughs> about that. And I, I kind of got lost on that one. Um, so I think basically, you know, side dishes, desserts, thing, things like that is what we're looking for. And uh, it does say to uh, give Tina a call and um, her number is 865-579-579. 5005, and that was in the email Nancy sent out to the parish. If you just want to come and you don't have a chance to call Tina, just come and bring something. It's, that'll be fine. I mean, my experience is that they will eat whatever we bring. So, <laughs> so uh, keep that in mind. Um, then after dinner, we go inside for a special Eucharist with Bishop Brian. And... Uh, Obviously, guests are always welcome at Tyson House on any Sunday night and encourage you to sometimes stop by and, and, and do that. Uh, but this is especially the night that we need for St. Luke's and our and friends of St. Luke's to turn out uh, since we will be hosting the, the dinner. Um, Tyson House is an Episcopal and Lutheran campus ministry at UT. 
and it's located at 800 Melrose Place, 37917. That is also in your information. Uh, with that said, Ron, you have some things to add? We had a great class last Tuesday. I really enjoyed it. I uh, learned a lot about everybody who takes these classes. Why would they do that? I ask myself sometimes. Uh, but I figured it out last week. You know, it's in folks' heart to follow these paths, to study these things, and it's... And of course, for those who don't know, he's talking about Black Elk Speaks. They're right. reading Black Elk Speaks and talking about that book. Yeah, and it's, it's going well. I'm enjoying it. Good. Anything else? Nope. All right, so let's take this time as we prepare for worship, and I encourage you, uh, we usually just take three nice deep breaths to kind of just breathe in the Holy Spirit, and as you breathe out, just let yourself relax. We did that a couple of times. Let your hearts and minds find that center from which you pray and offer praise and worship to God. Let yourself be present. And continue just to breathe in that space for a moment in silence before we begin the liturgy. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, if you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of the God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings.
a reading from Deuteronomy. Moses convened all Israel and said to them, Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances, that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you, so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is your our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. <laughs> Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorstep, doorpost of your house and on your gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will say responsibly at the Astro Psalm 119, verse 1 through 8. Happy are they whose way is blameless. Who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and seek him with all their hearts, who never do any wrong, but always walk in his ways. You lay down your commandments that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to blame when I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with an unfading heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Do not, not utterly forsake me. A reading from Hebrews. When Christ came as a high priest of, of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls, with the sprinkling of ashes of a heifer, sanctifies those who have been defiled, so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. One of the scribes came near and heard the Sadducees disputing with one another and seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and besides him there is no others. 
and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May God be in my head and in my heart and my understanding. Amen. 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 You may be So obviously, I'm, I'm not Deacon Ron. <laughs> we just forgot to change it from last week in the bulletin. And we preach every other week, so uh, uh, this was my week. Next week, it's his week. And I want to talk to you this morning about the ABCs of being church. And I say ABCs because as Episcopalians, whenever we start talking about the meaning of anything, we go to three sources to inform our choices and our decision making. making. A, we go to scripture. B, we go to Christian tradition throughout the centuries and up through today. And uh, C, we go to reason. Especially using the reason that we gain not only from how we're able to, to uh, put scripture and tradition together and understand them to inform each other, but also reason from our own experience of how God works in the world, in our lives and the lives of others. So if we're going to talk about the ABCs of being church, then basically that's where we need to go. We need to go A to scripture. B to Christian tradition, C to reason. And that's what I want to do today. And those aren't, they're kind of in an order because we do everything in some order, but you really just see them more as a triangle or a circle. They all come into conversation with each other. To go to scripture and think about what it means to be church, let's use the scriptures we had today. Let's start with Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy uh, sets us off on a track of saying, we are here to focus on God as the one who gives life, sustains life, and guides and leads all life. We are here to love the Lord our God with all our heart, it says, and with all our soul, and with all our might. Sometimes in other places that will say different things, but here it's our heart and our soul and our mind. In other words, everything that's in us. And then it goes on to say that, that what we are to do as a community of faith is not only keep these words ourselves, but to teach them to others, especially to our children, to support each other in living life that way, a life centered on giving our heart and our soul and our mind, everything to God. Then the gospel, Jesus continues by reminding us of something else that was in those commandments. In fact, the second part, they turned into about 365 different commandments trying to get it right. But in general, the second and great commandment that we hear from Jesus, which he heard from being brought up in his community of faith, is to love our neighbor as ourselves. To love neighbor. So the love of God and the love of neighbor is what is central to being church. And I want you to note that in both of these, they're not addressed to an individual person. Ever since the Reformation, uh, in trying to recover some of the personal faith, we kind of stepped over and forgot about what it means to have faith as a community. These are not really directed to a person. The writer of Deuteronomy says, Hear, O Israel. In other words, Israel, the community of faith. Jesus addresses leaders from that community of Israel. Jesus himself is a leader and regarded as something of a traveling rabbi in that community of faith. It is the community of faith that both Jesus and the writer of Deuteronomy address. That the central act, the first thing 
on the minds and the hearts and in the will, the whole might of a community of faith needs to be this focus on God. And that's an important part of part A when we begin to look at what it means to be church. But if we also move to the reading from the book of Hebrews, which is often called a letter, but probably was more like a circulating essay, there's another part to A that we need to remember. It's a part that reminds us of something that we can easily forget when we're trying to love God. Sometimes we get so caught up in loving God with our heart and our soul and our mind, we think it's about how good our liturgy is <laughs> or how good our outreach program program is. That too. We can get caught up in both. But what the writer of Hebrews reminds us of at the very end of this passage we, we read is that we need to clean up, purify, clear up the way we look and think about this and remember that we are here to worship the living God. Okay? And that word living is important. Not a God that did something once and now we just continue to try to praise what we've always known, but a living God. And the quality of anything that's living is it moves. Whether it's a plant that moves through the earth and then becomes a, becomes a full plant, whether it's a baby that's born and then grows into adulthood, whether it is a the little puppy that's so cute when we get it and turns out to be this huge Newfoundland that, that walk, can't walk through the house without knocking everything over. I had one of those once. <laughs> Anything that is living, it grows and moves and changes. And so... The writer of Hebrews reminds us that when we love with all our heart and mind and might, and with our heart and soul and might, this God, it is a living God, a God that is on the move. Our colleague for the day reminds us of that. It reminds us to run without stumbling, but again, the key word is run. It doesn't say st stay still and watch what this living God is doing out there. It doesn't even just say you might have to move a little bit to keep up with this little God. It says you're going to be running. And again, this is not addressed just to me as Gail or to, to Brenda or to Jim or to Tim or to Barbara or John or any of you individually. Though it does have meaning for us individually, but it is addressed to the whole community of faith. Or as Christians, what we call the church. That the church, to be the church, according to part A, scripture of what we're looking at, puts God and the love with all of the soul of that church, with all of the heart of that church, with all of the, of the might, the decision making, whatever power and ability we have to make decisions that affect, affect that. We are to do that with everything we've got. And we need to remember that as a church, if we're going to do it, we're going to have to keep running and moving to keep up with God who moves according to what is needed at every time in history. That's part A of what it need, means to be church. We have to be a church that is willing to run to keep up with the living God. Which brings us to part B, taking a look at Christian tradition and what we might see in terms of communities of faith, see in the, in the church and Christian tradition. And a part of Christian tradition from the very beginning, from the very beginning on the day of Pente Pentecost has to do with movement. On the very at the very beginning, when that group is, is having community of faith in church the way they're used to having it according to their, their practices from the religion that they grew up with, the first act of the Spirit is to move them out of that. To move them literally out of the building, into the streets. To move them into places where it's not just other people who are already a part of that community that they're speaking to, but even people that they never even thought could be included in the community. The first act is movement, and they have to run. They have to run to keep up with that. 
As Christian tradition has developed, sometimes that movement is seen in, in literal ways of moving from one place to another. Uh, missions that move out from some place to another. Uh, pilgrimages that move out from one place to another. But in the part of Christian tradition that eventually became contained within the British Isles as it was driven out from its place in different parts of the empire, a tradition we call today Celtic tradition, but basically the Christian tradition, the Christian tradition that we call it Celtic Christian today, but the tr Christian tradition that grew up there in parallel with the empire tradition. They had a practice called peregrination, peregrination, P-E-R-E-G-R-I-N-A-T-I-O-N, -E -E I think. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if you Google that, the first thing that comes up, and there's several different ways that it's used and expressed, the first thing that comes up is just a simple line, a journey, especially a long or meandering one. I love that especially a meandering one. Because in the other forms of movement that I talked about, in mission, there's usually some purpose, some place you know you're going to do that mission, some way you know you're going to go about doing it, some group that's going to support you in it. In pilgrimage, there is some place you're headed with your fellow pilgrims, a holy place usually, and you know that that's where you're going. But in peregrination, the practice of peregrination, was one where an individual or sometimes small groups of individuals would simply set out by land or sea without any destination in mind. And their only purpose was to pay attention to the leading of the Holy Spirit, the guidance, and to keep going wherever that spirit led them, no matter how far from home it was, until they got to a place that they realized they were supposed to stop. And they called that the place of resurrection. Because it was the place where a new life would begin for that community or that person. But we're really talking about communities now. Patrick did this and started communities all over the place in the British Isles. We think of them as Ireland, but really all over. Bridget, St. Bridget did this in Kildare. And so this idea of movement, when we think of the meaning of being church, the idea of peregrination is one that we've kind of lost. We tend to want to have 10 year strategic plans and um, things that we're headed for, that we know that we're going to achieve. And yet when we look at our tradition, that we look all the way back, even how that informs how we understand what Jesus was doing with his disciples as they roamed throughout the countryside without any particular destination in mind often, is that we've lost that. We've lost the practice of peregrination. So the B part of being church is to recover that idea of moving in a meandering way with an eye and an ear out for the spirit, seeking the place of resurrection, that is resurrection both for the church at large and the church in specific, as in St. Luke's. That place of resurrection New life, not only for the body that gathers to worship and to receive and give to each other pastoral care, but also for the community in which they land. Now, sometimes today, this is still a physical movement. There are churches today that are deciding that, that they, their real mission is someplace else or outside a building entirely. But more often, this idea of peregrination and the life of the church today is, is spiritually finding that place of resurrection within the outward way that we do church. For instance, trying out different ways of worshiping, trying out different ways of spending our money, 
trying out different ways of organizing ourselves. Which is what brings us to part C. And reason, especially from our experience. Because we at St. Luke's, as I've announced in the last week or so, are on the edge of a peregrination. Rooted in scripture and in tradition and in the call as a community of faith to give heart and soul and will, might, to whatever this living God calls us out to. And the form that that will be taking, of course, is triggered by the fact that I'm going to re-retire. I am supposed to already be retired. But it's not solely because of that. That's simply the thing that's making us move at this time. The movement's beyond that. The movement is a part of what it means to get up and start that meandering journey. And so we'll do that, as, as I've announced. We'll do that in, uh, at the beginning of the year as we place our deacon as a deacon in charge of the parish, doing the kinds of things for the parish that a priest in charge does, except for sacramental things, which a deacon cannot do, because he will still be a deacon. He's not gonna be made a priest so he can just do the same thing we always did with another person. This is something different. It's something that's been used in lots of places, but it'll be different for us, that Ron will be the deacon in charge. That the Archdeacon of the Diocese, Jerry Askew, whom you all know, will be the diocesan staff liaison directly to Ron, to help him, to guide him, to mentor him, to be there as support for him and as things go on. And they're already going to meet, I believe, what is it, tomorrow? To no, begin, pardon? Tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Tomorrow at 4 o'clock, so you might want to keep that in your prayers to begin to draft what it is going to look like for him to be deacon in charge. The other part of that is that there will be a team of at least three priests who come in on Sundays to do Eucharist with one Sunday a month or at somewhere around there, some Sunday a month, being reserved for Ron to lead a morning prayer or what we call just the Liturgy of the Word, which is another long-standing tradition in the Anglican Church. And so it's a recovery of that as we, as we move forward. And I think we realized in the pandemic, when we couldn't always get together and have communion, how important that is, just the, the, those prayer services. So this is a different way of being church. It's not a way that we just pulled out of the air, but it is a way that I believe is part of the call that God has for St. Luke's at this time. Not just to help us have clergy support in a, in a different way, but to take our place in developing different ways of being church that are gonna be needed by all sorts of different people a different way of engaging many different people outside of this congregation as we will have to do to do this, to see what happens here and what's going on in this neighborhood in a way that they might not ever even come over to see. So as we begin this peregrination and meander through a year of trying this out before we decide how, whether or not we want to commit to it or not, St. Patrick always began his peregrinations with a prayer that actually is turned into a hymn in our hymn book. And I'm going to read part of that to you. Uh, it's called, sometimes it's called St. Patrick's Breastplate. Sometimes it's just called a prayer of St. Patrick. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to change it a little bit. So instead of saying I, I will say we and our so that we can remember that what we're talking about here, this is what we're asking God, creator, word, and spirit to do for us as we begin our peregrination. Let us pray. We bind unto ourselves today 
the strong name of the Trinity. By invocation of the same, the three in one, and one in three. We bind this day to ourselves forever by power of faith, Christ's incarnation, his baptism in the Jordan River, his death on the cross for our salvation, his bursting from the spice of tomb, his riding up the heavenly way, his coming at the day of doom, we bind him to ourselves today. Christ be with us. Christ within us. Christ behind us. Christ before us. Christ beside us. Christ to win us. Christ to comfort and restore us. Christ in danger. Christ in all, in hearts of all that love us. Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. We bind them to ourselves today. The name, the strong name of the Trinity. By invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three, of whom all nature hath creation. Eternal Father, Spirit, Word. Praise to the Lord of our salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll take a moment of silence. Please turn to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us stand to recite together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, the God not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under conscious silence. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Fairs of the People, our form six on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, and injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. 
for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Brian, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all, all who serve God and his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Patricia. Fran, Robert, Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For Tyson House and the ministry that goes on there. For our bishop. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. For Lida. For Frank's brother. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you? We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion and give us our sins. Known and unknown, things done and left unknown, and so hold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the midst of our God, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And I also with you. Greet each other, please, from a distance. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. You may be seated. I remind you that our offering is taken in the alms box that's at the narthex and that any time either in the service, before the service, or after the service, you're invited to give your monetary offering by placing it in the box. Sharon, would you hold the box up so they can see what we're talking about? Right there.
Please stand as we offer our alms and oblations to the Lord. Here we lift up the box again. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own God give them to thee. Amen. We, we continue on page 361 in Eucharistic Prayer 8. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and to death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and to die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, our Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, Bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God. The people of God.
on the body of Christ to go to heaven. Amen. The body of Christ to go to heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ. 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 The bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Please turn to page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us stand as we pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as as living members of your your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the blessing of God, Creator, Christ, Holy Spirit, be among you today and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salam. 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 Sal